section about the updates for Unified FX Phone View 4.2. And we've got one or two little uh, bits of news that we're going to uh, throw in today and a little uh, surprise for you at the end, uh, which I think you're going to like. So first of all, um, if you want to ask questions, you can do that any time during the presentation. Uh, if you make sure you do it in the question and answer box, and not the chat box, but in the question and answer box, and ensure that you uh, submit the questions to all panellists so we can all see the, the, the questions that are asked, and we can maybe answer them interactively while one of us is talking. Uh, and that hopefully will get the feedback to you that you need. The session is being recorded, so if you do want a copy of it, then do email us at the sales alias, and we can uh, send you the link once we've got that established. So without further ado, uh, I'll pass you over to our Chief Technical Officer, Stephen Welsh, who's going to take you through uh, the new features of the new version. Over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks everybody for joining. Um, so let me just take you through a few uh, little things. <clears throat> now, the main thing um, that we've really done in terms of this, this release um, is not so much a lot of functionality, we have a little bit of new functionality to show you, but it's mostly all the kind of back-end uh, work that we've been performing in terms of testing, and uh, obviously a key part of that, which we've managed to achieve, is IBT testing. Um, so the, the great news is version 4.2 is officially Cisco compatible, so that means we're now listed on the marketplace, and uh, you can even provide us uh, some feedback and ratings, as I think uh, someone already has, which is, which is excellent, appreciate that. Um, one key thing, I've got lots of good things in terms of compatibility, obviously. Um, a key thing is that Cisco TAC will now engage on support related issues. So if you have just a general uh, issue with your uh, communications manager platform, and for any reason it may be related to interactions with uh, PhoneView, uh, previously uh, with any non compatible third party product, PAC would tell you to stop using that facility and uh, you know, because it's obviously not compatible and therefore supportable. The good news is if anything does happen and any dialogue uh, does uh, get started in relation to how PhoneView works with your platform, uh, TAC can now uh, engage with us and uh, we can work together to, to solve any issues if, if there are any. Um, so really pleased with that and a key takeaway that we're really pleased about is uh, the fact that it we're now the only Cisco compatible product that can remotely control phones, which is uh, it's you know it's a kind of small little market that uh, we're in in terms of endpoint management compared to things like single wire and all these kind of big companies that do paging and kind of mainstay features. But we're really pleased we've managed to achieve that in this space. So in terms of enhanced functionality, uh, the, the main thing based on customer feedback that we enhanced this time around was the text messaging feature. Um, it was really, this was all possible, um, doing you know, two or three separate steps. You could always um, you know, send audio alerts uh, and text messages. You could even send vibrate instructions, but you always had to do it in you know, separate steps or and create a macro wasn't very user friendly to, to say the least. Um, so what we've basically done is just extend the text message form and uh, you'll see it in the demo, um, but basically we've broken out so you've got three main actions you can perform and uh, push out that. Now we're, we're kind of thinking about extending further, maybe even adding uh, like paging type functionality in the future. So, you know, always keen to, to hear people's uh, feedback in terms of things they would like to see or ways they'd like to change it. So feel free um, you know, to reach out to us with any suggestions. But that, that's the main new functionality that we've added at um, this version. Uh, one thing, though, um, that's worth reminding everybody about, because it might not be very obvious because the way we kind of promote it, is uh, actually that we give away phone inventory for free. Um, it's uh, something that you see a lot, you know, various uh, questions on support forums and things like that, and, you know, about PC port quality or uh, things, you know, just key information on all the devices, which ultimately you can only typically get from the phone itself, you know, typically via its web server. 
Uh, but <clears throat> we, we have this uh, ITL scanning um, free software that we give away, um, but actually part of what it does is not just scan for ITL issues, but actually gathers uh, a lot of information from the phone, something like five or more web pages um, are created on each device, so it's extensive information. Um, and uh, you know, so it's really just a reminder everybody that you know, feel free to, to take that for free, and uh, have a play with it, and use the, the data that it gathers. So the URL is there that you can uh, download it if you don't have it already to try it out, and uh, get some data. It works up to ten thousand phones from a license perspective, so it covers pretty much everybody's requirements in most situations. And just as an example. Um, even though it's creating quite a lot of data from a large number of devices, uh, because of how we've optimised uh, the scanning operation, it should be able to scan you know, 5,000, probably more phones in less than an hour, so it's not a, a big exercise. But again, because of the testing and the mechanisms that we put into place, um, you know, it was designed not to overload your call manager, etc. <clears throat> okay, so I think to mention is phone backgrounds. Um, so this is something we've um, updated the way that, or the kind of default way that PhoneView works in version 4.2. And um, we've had a couple of customers with issues recently uh, with the PhoneView, which is basically because uh, the personalization interface um, that was exposed in Communications Manager from version 6 onwards is now being depreciated. And that's the way that we um, typically pushed images out to the phones, was basically uploading to that interface on Communications Manager. But that's no longer available in version 10. So if you're trying to do it in version 4.1 or earlier of PhoneView, unfortunately it won't work at the moment with version 10. But the great news is we've changed that behavior We've got a different way of doing it, and in version 4.2, you can now still use personalization. The thing that's different is we don't talk to Communications Manager anymore. Um, it's now pulled directly from PhoneView. And the way that we do that is PhoneView actually has a web server built into it. Default, it's hosted on port 9090. And we basically tell the phone to go and download the background image, but instead of getting it from uh, Communications Manager, it's going to get it directly from Phone views uh, web server itself, which means that um, <clears throat> you will need to make sure that, from a firewall perspective, it's possible to go from um, uh, you know the, the phone subnets etc. Uh, back to uh, what do you call it? Um, you know the phone view on, on port 9090. If need be, that port can be changed. That's just the default. Um, obviously, we need to tell you how to do that, but um, that's just the way that we've set up at the moment. So, good news is, even though Cisco started to appreciate the personalization functionality, uh, we've accommodated that in the latest version. Um, <clears throat> okay, so endpoint support and secure licensing. Um, so, one of the things that um, we've uh, not really kind of, uh, well, we've made a kind of basic start to is adding support for the 8800 series. Now, ironically, I think we've actually got a number of people that have been using um, PhoneView already uh, on those models and basically works uh, probably perfectly well. But, you know, we like to test these things out fully in terms of the other functionality beyond just remote control that the software does. Um, so, basically, initial testing means that it looks like you can control them all fully, you can take screenshots, you can press the buttons, etc. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll still need to go through an exercise just to put official support on there, but you know, we're pretty comfortable that if you've got those models, uh, they'll, they'll work fine. Um, <clears throat> secure licensing. So this is a, a secure feature that we added, which um, was on customer request again. Basically, we have uh, a couple of customers now that work in what we call secure isolated networks, you know, top secret networks effectively, uh, typically of a military nature, um, which uh, means that there's limited uh, transport of information basically from the secure uh, network outbound. So that breaks the way that our licensing mechanism normally works. So we extended it so that uh, it would basically use effectively what we call a kind of static license style um, that we can, you know, tie down in different ways and uh, that just we generate that, you can load that up into phone view, and um, there's no other communication is required that doesn't need to send any information out from that isolated network. So it's it's quite a, a rare scenario, but obviously it's it's quite important to uh, some key customers. So uh, we've added that functionality. So uh, you know if uh, anybody out there does uh, operate against a, a secure isolated network, then you know, we can support that nice and happily now. 
Um, that's really it in terms of new functionality. The, the, the big ticket thing is ultimately the Cisco compatibility, uh, the testing and the bug fixing, etc. All those kind of exercises we've been through over the last few months um, <clears throat> to, get, to get the compatible badge, um, which obviously means we're only compatible uh, product with Cisco for doing remote control of uh, IP phones. The, one of the things that's kind of interesting is um, <laughs> our software that is used by Cisco um, uh, in several places, so we kind of see that as really nice vendor endorsement. Um, so Cisco TAC, uh, the use engineers around the world, uh, they use that uh, extensively in their lab topologies. Um, Cisco IT internally, um, specifically the ACE team that deal with all the latest communications manager versions, um, they use their software. And uh, if you set the CCI collaboration exam, you know, you have done in the last kind of month onwards, I would say, um, uh, then basically the proctors are now using GoingView to mark the tests or help mark it. They've got automation, obviously, but there's some things they have to manually test as well. So they do all that remotely in the evening uh, when they're testing out their pod configuration. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting that uh, they're using the software to, to help them uh, in that respect. And uh, then finally, as a more recent thing, um, the Cisco Developer Sandbox uh, were, uh, were basically uh, you, you'd be able to use our software as a facility of the Developer Sandbox. So if you're developing software against Cisco's uh, APIs and uh, you need to use Sandbox for testing, etc., um, you know, pretty much either now or in the future, very soon, you'll also be able to leverage uh, phone view remotely access the uh, phones in the, the Sandbox to control them and perform testing, etc. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, another key thing just to point out as a reminder is uh, the unmatched performance because of the parallel keying engine and the, the way we execute things. Again, it's uh, 100 times faster than any other product. And uh, the key thing is, which, you know, the way it was designed fundamentally is it's a very visual and interactive product that works with the entire phone estate. So here we go. Uh, a new little <laughs> thing, as, as Andy was uh, kind of alluding to, in terms of maybe a, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, we've actually got two two things that we're going to do, which maybe breaks the mold a little bit of a normal um, kind of release presentation that we do. Um, we're going to do a, a, just a little video um, that shows you this new product that we're bringing to market. Um, we're going to release it uh, in January. That's the, the target date. Um, in fact, I, I forgot to set up the event. I meant to do that earlier. Um, but basically, uh, I'll, if I'll do it ideally really soon. But if you go back to events at unifiedfx.com, we'll pop up um, a date for the event in January for this new product. However, uh, we're actually starting uh, beta testing, so that's now open, um, and uh, you can contact us at beta at unifiedfx.com. So what is it? Um, it's a world board. Initially for UCCX, we're obviously going to plan for uh, supporting other platforms as well. The reason, you know, there's lots of all boards out there, but one of the reasons why we put it together is because we've actually added, as we like to do, something that's kind of different, unique, and of benefit. So it has the fastest data updates um, that's basically available. As far as we can tell, it's something like 100 times faster than any other product, any other wall board in the market that, that we've certainly found. So again, quite a significant you know, uh, improvement against uh, other approaches. Um, <clears throat> another thing that's uh, different uh, is the fact that it's a self-installation. It, it actually can take about 90 seconds to install, which is kind of unbelievable for any uh, Cisco IP telephony software. Uh, you know, I, I'm personally an IP telephony engineer for a number of years now, and um, the idea of installing anything in an IP telephony environment in less than an hour is uh, a joy. Um, but uh, we've actually managed to get it down to uh, literally less than two minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that, that's a, a key benefit for everybody, I think. Um, but part of the way that we package the software as well means that it also self-upgrades uh, with uh, basic automatic software upgrades. So as, as we publish software, <coughs> it basically becomes available. Um, the software itself will check for new versions. It's just a, a service, a Windows service ultimately, obviously. And if it finds a new version, it will upgrade itself um, at an appropriate time that you choose. So it basically means that you never need to worry about it again once it's installed. You know, if you go and upgrade your UCX platform to a new version, the odds are um, it will work with it straight away because uh, as we add support for future versions and systems and platforms, it will automatically embed it in the product. So uh, we think that's a key strategy. 
strategy that will just make the operational uh, cost and management of the software significantly better. Um, another feature that's worth pulling out on this new product is uh, remote display management. <coughs> what we mean by that is typically, and a lot of you know traditional wallboard systems, you know, uh, obviously all the way back to big LED displays, that's a different thing entirely. But even uh, ones where it's just a you know a plasma a LCD screen, they're typically hooked up to a computer. Even if that computer's just um, you know performing a browser session to you know the wallboard content. But the thing is you've still got a computer you have to deploy, manage as well as the cost of the purchase and uh, maintenance of that um, system. But uh, we actually came up with a way to do it where you can actually remotely configure the display. So if you have something, literally pretty much anything with a browser, you point it to the wallboard and from that point onwards, we can control that endpoint. Um, <clears throat> so it means that even if you've got something like a, a smart TV, uh, maybe one of those little kind of $50 Android uh, don't, HDMI dongles, that kind of thing, Plug that into your display and that's it. You don't even need to manage the dongle because as long as you've initiated it and it's browsing onto the wallboard service, from that point onwards you can centrally manage it. You kind of need to see how it works, uh, you know, and we'll get to that. Certainly if you're interested, we can show you in the, the beta. Even if you don't want to join the beta, I suppose we could also do a, a kind of little demo, but we'll certainly be doing a, a release in January to give you more information on it. So fundamentally, there's no plugins, it's 100% HTML, and there's actually no PC required. You can still use a computer if you really want to, but you don't actually have to anymore. So, uh, what I'm actually going to do though, uh, uh, let's see if I can do this as a, a technical webinar presentation challenge, is that I've got a web video link I'm going to try and share. Hopefully, this will come through to everybody. So, let me just make sure I do this correctly. So, if you look at your screens, and I'm just going to kick off um, the video. It takes about two minutes uh, to watch, so if you watch it with us and uh, uh, you know, see what you think. So let's see if that kicks off. Okay, uh, hopefully that played out for everybody. Um, I saw a couple of comments, uh, certainly uh, at least one saying they can see the, the video. Um, I think it should have played out for everybody by now, and I'm not talking over it. <coughs> we can send out the link directly. We don't really, really want to publish this too much at the moment. We just want to give a feel for it, and ideally drum up a few interested parties to test out the software with us, um, so that, that would be excellent if anybody is interested just to finding out more. So uh, that was really just it in terms of uh, the wallboard aspect, um, the, the second product from Unified FX, number of uh, <laughs> long hours in the making, but uh, hopefully everybody's going to enjoy it when we do get out to the mass market. Uh, okay, so that's us in terms of um, the kind of presentation side, etc. And uh, 
basically, um, what I'm actually going to do is two things. Because I don't have a lot of functionality to show, which is a bit of a shame because it's more internals. Um, I thought I'd make this a little bit of a challenge. Um, so I'm going to publish version 4.2 live uh, for everybody. So it's not it's available now for download. It's not going to be available later today for download. It's going to be available during this session. So this is going to be part of my demo. It's actually publishing uh, 4.2. So I thought I'd do that for, for a, a little bit of a change. So uh, let me get myself organised here. So uh, application. Let's see if this comes through. So I'm just going to share my screen, and <coughs> basically, uh, <coughs> hopefully my computer screen is coming through. I've got a couple of web pages open, and uh, on the right hand side, I've got part of our continuous integration platform. So it's part of the you know, number of tools that we use when, when we develop, write, publish software, etc. And uh, what I'm basically going to do, and it takes about seven or eight minutes roughly, is publish 4.2 live for everybody. So if I go to our website and we go to the download page, let me just refresh that to, to prove that the latest version that you can download at this point in time is 4.1, okay, the latest build of it. Same with the, the release notes, uh, the latest release notes are 4.1.3 as well. Now what I'm going to do is initiate the publishing of the, the new version. So I'm going to set it to publish. I've got the version there. Just a point to note, and this is it's a subtle thing that it's so powerful for us, um, we actually have a feature called a release channel. And what that is, is the ability to publish software to different places. Um, right? So if I don't put anything in here, this becomes production. If I wanted to create an alpha release, I just create a release channel called alpha. I can publish beta software, I can publish um, com oops, company specific software as well, right? So because we have that mechanism, it's maybe not used too heavily for phone view, but the plan is to use something like that extensively for the Wobble product coming down the line, because it means that we can actually automatically upgrade on specific builds, bug fixes, new functionality to discrete customers or groups of individuals. It helps us to do things like A-B testing, things like that, so we can you know, get the, the best mechanics of uh, software quality. Um, and uh, what we can also do as part of the publishing mechanism is actually automatically publish the release notes. So I can publish to, you know, I can skip it or I can choose which uh, set of release notes I'm pushing. I'm going to do an actual public release. So I'm going to kick that off now. And fingers crossed, um, I uh, do all this correctly. Okay, it's kicked off, so it's estimating it's going to take about eight minutes. So what I'm going to do whilst that's running away is uh, show you the text message feature. So if I bring up uh, phone view, again, it's quite a simple feature. So if I've got a bit of spare time, I'll maybe take a couple of questions um, <clears throat> or cover some other features if uh, they seem relevant. Uh, we basically get phone view running, and uh, you can see your phones. Uh, it's updating live, so I've got automatic screenshots. Um, one thing actually that's worth mentioning, and I'm really hopeful we can we can do this. Uh, we're actually in the process of uh, uh, seeing if we can get a solution to the screenshots on the 9971. Anybody that's certainly done CCI studying, etc., um, or the CCI collaboration. Uh, or has a large number of these devices, uh, will be aware that if you try to remotely control something like a 9971, the screenshots are really slow, and that's a phone issue. It's not a phone view problem. Um, it takes literally about 10 seconds for that phone to return an image, so we're kind of hampered by that. But what you can see with these models, because they're nice and responsive, is, is obviously very interactive um, and at scale one of the key objectives when we put the software together at the very beginning. So it looks lovely, nice and interactive, even with all these devices. Um, we're hopeful that we can get something solved with the 9971, and obviously we'll tell the world if, if we, we figure it out. So fingers crossed we, we solve that problem. Um, now, <clears throat> just to show you, the text feature is still in the same place. So uh, we've got this send message option here. I click that. And uh, basically, uh, it's these two panels at the bottom that we've added. Uh, so you've still got the same um, message 
uh, kind of title, message prompt, and uh, callback facility. Uh, the callback facility, if I put a number in here, is um, just basically a number to dial map to a soft key on the text message and also we can make it disappear as well so maybe make it disappear after 10 seconds so that's the existing functionality um, but what we've basically added is the ability to do a play URI now actually this is a little bit of an extensible window that we've our panel that we've got in here um, at the moment um, the, the kind of simple way of using it is just to choose an audio file so they need to be listed on the TFTP server so the phone can download and play. There are some technical parameters in terms of the format of the file. Uh, it has a hard limit of about five seconds duration as well. <clears throat> um, but you can play that out and you can repeat it uh, multiple times too. What you can also do is send a vibrate instruction. This only applies to the wireless phones, obviously, but you know, we do have a few customers that use this software in that type of environment and they want to alert people. Um, so uh, that's why we obviously included the, the vibrate functionality. I'll take it off because although we do have a wireless phone, can't really demonstrate a phone vibrating via uh, WebEx. Um, so if I hit OK on that, it's going to push out a text message. Uh, our kind of lab phones are next door, so you probably wouldn't hear the jingle, but I could hear it. Um, it's push out the message. You've got the dial button in the bottom left, and there we go. Ten seconds later, it's automatically uh, closed that. Let me do it again. So it's remembered the parameters I set. I'll, I'll do it a little bit longer. I'll do 30 seconds. In fact, I'm going to be custom. I'm just going to type 25. Click OK. Again, push it out, and uh, 25 seconds later, it's going to disappear. What I'm going to do is hit one of them on soft key one. And that basically, um, oh, I don't know if I put the right phone number in there. Did I? Um, oh, I did. I'm not sure where that phone is. Oh, there it's there. Right. Well, let me answer that. There we go. So that was pressing the dial soft key. So that, that's handy because if you're broadcasting a text message out and maybe someone needs to give you feedback because they're not ready for what you're about to tell them or do, uh, that they're notifying, then they can quickly and easily contact you back. So that was just me pressing that dial soft key and uh, dialing the desk phone next to me, able to take that call. So that's uh, nice and simple. <coughs> So, as I say, not a lot of new functionality or very interesting stuff ultimately, but um, certainly worth showing. Um, in terms of uh, the performance of software, it's all the same great stuff, but because we've gone through the Cisco compatibility testing, um, that's the key thing that it's engineered and validated uh, against Cisco's platforms. Now, whilst we're waiting to see how this is progressing, Oh, okay, apparently we've got three minutes to, to talk for. Um, we've basically got the build running there. And if I go minimize that for a second, uh, just to show you what I'm running at the moment, if I do help, and I do about phone view. I am running 4.2, but I'm running a, a, basically a beta release, uh, one that published uh, previously to the beta release channel. So it's version 1.91 at the end there. Um, but what I'm actually going to do when this, uh, once that build is finished, it'll actually upgrade uh, PhoneView Live. And uh, what I'm also going to show you, I should have it here, is this will also automatically uh, update as well. So it's, it's part of the uh, continuous integration approach. One of these things that when you're building out a software company that you learn is that uh, it's not just writing code. Um, there's a lot of tools and technology that go around it as well if you want to uh, deliver a well-maintained uh, product, etc. <coughs> so that's uh, what we've had to do. Now, whilst I'm kind of waiting for these last minute or two, let's see if I can find the Q&A panel. And if there's any relevant questions, uh, whilst we're waiting for the last bit of the demo to complete. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, yep, there's a question here. Um, so the enhanced text feature, is there a possibility in a future expansion to be used for emergency notification uh, similar to other products? Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Well, actually, that reminds me. One of the things I was thinking of showing that uh, does make it relevant is if I open up this uh, send message, and let me just do it with a subset here. If I do send message again, 
the way this is actually structured, um, and the way that we kind of sometimes write software as well, is we sometimes have some hidden little features in here that we don't directly expose, so that um, <coughs> maybe because you know, we like to keep things easy to use, but give some power behind it. But technically, and I actually forget the URL, so we have to copy it. Uh, technically, you can put any instruction and repeat it as well if required uh, in combination with that text message. So, for example, let me find it. It is do, 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 multicast receive. Yep, this one here. If I just copy that, and this time what I'll do is I'll paste it into this URI box. And maybe we should add that to the drop down list thinking about it. But basically, <clears throat> what they should do, I haven't actually tested this, so again, kind of winging it, I'm, I'm going to do it just to win for now. In theory, what they should do is push out a text message and tell the phones to receive a broadcast audio stream, which is kind of like the emergency notification question. So we've kind of got it in here. We'll maybe just not exposed it in the easiest way as yet. So I guess we just need a little bit of inspiration to, to expose it. But let me try this out. So what I should do is push out a text message and receive multicast audio, basically paging. So if I send that out, wow, it works. I can hear it next door. Um, and uh, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit just so you can see that. You can see that it's got the audio kind of receive function. Uh, it's actually a two-part operation, so if I go to transmit and I hit send, this phone is now broadcasting a page, audio paging effectively to all these other handsets. Um, so this is the thing we didn't really intend when we created this software to create a paging application. The ironic thing is that um, the mechanics are almost identical to the likes of you know, single wire and all these kind of <coughs> paging systems, it, well, what we really need to do, I guess, is just make the user interface a, a bit more convenient. So I guess to your, answer your question is we're almost there. Um, <laughs> we just need to dress up the, the selection between the phone initiating the, the page and uh, how that uh, basically ties in with here. So maybe we'll just add a simple little option in here to choose um, the phone that's going to broadcast um, and the rest of the ones, the ones the phone just select can then receive. So that's, that's actually a good question and appropriate timing as well. So let me just see if um, the build is complete. Okay, it says success. So let me go over to here and uh, let me just check something. If I now do that, so uh, okay. And if I now hit refresh, ta da 4.2, um, 193, which is the, the last build that we just were running there. If I go to release announcements and I refresh this page, uh, there it's there, uh, 4.2. The only thing I have to manually do is pin it to the top of the forum. So pin to home, highlight forum, and uh, I forget how you save this. I don't use this very often. I may do it straight away. I think it does. Right. So let me go back to here. Perfect. And then all I have to do is go to this older entry, take it from the highlight, take it from the home, go back, and uh, that's the lease notes. So there we are. So you can now download version 4.2 yourself um, <coughs> straight from the website. You saw it live. And uh, the release announcements are there. If you go to the home page, here are now the prime release notes on the front page. And just for fun, let's do an upgrade here. Let me just, uh, too many things going on here. I'll have to leave those for to later. But in theory, if I go help check for upgrades, it should find that. Oh, there we go. I go, there you go, 4.2193, few changes. There's the release notes, the two main features, which is the uh, audio, uh, te enhanced text message in the secure licensing. I click update now and we're upgrading. And obviously, anybody running version 4.0 or above actually can check for that version and uh, upgrade now as well if you like. So that's really it in terms of uh, the demo. So I've tried to space it up a little bit in Life on the Edge by uh, publishing live. So that, uh, thank, thank goodness that worked. Let me uh, stop sharing and uh, just to summarize the uh, <coughs> etc. So, well, I think what I'll go back. To, I'll do the questions actually at the end. So let me just do the conclusion slide, and then we'll uh, just answer some questions. Well, so it's displayed. <coughs> so, 
let me see. Um, yeah, basically, kind of call to action almost. If anybody has uh, used CX and are interested in trying out our um, absolutely brand spanking new written from scratch wallboard product, it's uh, cutting edge in 21st century uh, design, um, please email us at beta at unifiedfx.com and we'll. Uh, Sort you out. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are going to publish uh, a Wallboard FX uh, event, so I haven't done it yet actually, I forgot, uh, but we'll get that published on events.unifiedfx.com probably first, second week of January, and then we'll host it. Um, and uh, anybody uh, that has version 4, um, <clears throat> or uh, basically it's a, a type license, they can upgrade to version 4.2, just have a current support contract basically, or be within support coverage. Uh, any kind of questions on licensing, if you've still got a version 3 license key, maybe some people do, but not many I think, um, you can obviously email us, licensingunifiedfx.com, and uh, it's now available to download as you've just been uh, demonstrated. Uh, okay, so. Thanks, David. Can I just say that uh, Scott mm -hmm. from the Smithsonian has just won the T-shirt for uh, being the first out of the trap to download that building <laughs> you just made. Well done, Scott. Excellent. I've seen I had a prize. Oh, you've just set a prize. Excellent. Uh, I, I, we'll do that for the next webinar for Wallboard. Then we'll, we'll have to set a prize for the first person to install it or something. Cause, uh, yeah. I, see, I was actually thinking holding a contest to see who could install it the quickest, uh, get under uh, 60 seconds. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Good show. Um, right, so is there a few questions? That, it looks like there's a few questions, actually. Um, yeah, there was. I think we've answered most of them, but you can maybe have a look through and see if you can give more extensive answers. If you yeah, can. okay, no problem. So, yeah, we covered the um, kind of emergency notification feature. I think, actually, with a minor change, we could probably make it almost like a full, pa a full paging system. So, um, we'll maybe have a, 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 that might be something for the roadmap for version 5 then. Um, Okay, uh, synthetic phone call testing feature, have one phone call or another in bulk test and report the results. Um, yeah, well funnily enough, uh, we've kind of had that, que that question recently this week as well. Um, so that's basically the ability to, uh, you know, in groups of phones, maybe schedule a script, uh, bulk testing where you can maybe select against 100 phones, make them dial another 100 phones or into another system like voicemail or IVR, etc. Uh, maybe even a PSTN destination, um, you know, I guess do that out of hours and uh, obviously report the results. Um, we've actually got some other, th I can't tell you anything obviously, but other stuff in the pipeline um, in terms of operational monitoring, um, which is uh, very much parallel to, to a part of the world board kind of solution. So yeah, I think, I think if you watch this space, I think we'll definitely be doing something along those lines uh, next year. Um, <clears throat> so, Let's see, bulk phone testing. And just to not exclude what you can do right now, you can do all those tests. It's just that you have to drive them manually at the moment. So you could bulk test, uh, uh, you know, 100 phones and all that kind of stuff. It's just that you have to drive it because it's one of the things that we would think the software originally was real time interaction with your entire phone estate and all the mechanics are there and it's fully tested and works exceptionally well and really pleased with it. But we're probably going as far as you can in terms of real-time interaction. Um, so I think the, the next logical step is, you know, scheduling and automation. So I, I think that's probably one of the directions we'll go down. Um, <clears throat> okay. Du, 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 du. I can't read and talk at the same time, so just to bear with me a little second. I think we've covered most of the You think that's it? Okay. Well, uh, oh, there's another one here. Uh, oh, right, okay. oh, yeah, so I just want to join the beta group. That's fine, you covered that one. Uh, someone upgraded. Excellent. Uh, oh, that would be an awesome addition. What one was that? Multicast enabled in VLANs. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. So the question there about paging. Yeah, so see with any paging system, um, you typically, when you're using it, you have would have to enable multicast on your network. So we've obviously enabled multicast on our um, relatively small lab network, but it does have multiple subnets, etc. So uh, we had to do that. <coughs> um, There's one there just from Sammy uh, asking, she's got version 4, uh, and uh, is she eligible for the latest release? Um, the answer to that is if you've got a current support contract, you're uh, eligible to all the latest releases. Uh, we've got version 5 that we've got on the roadmap, and you're asking about there. So providing you have a current support contract when that comes out, yes, that will be 
uh, eligible and uh, no additional charge for that too. Um, okay, I've got another question here um, from Sammy. I can't. That's kind of. I'm going to answer that one uh, directly. Actually, I'm going to take a note of that because I, I I can't provide a public answer to that question, unfortunately. But it's a good question. Um, so, hold on. Sorry, I can't type or talk at the same time either. Uh, <coughs> so, I've got note of that. Um, you see him. So, uh, okay. I think that's lastly. Yeah. Yeah. Same one. Okay. Rumor is that you will need on-site beta testers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think someone's going <laughs> to come to Scotland. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should have, I should have tried when I was reading that. Um, Mike, can, yeah. Mike, can we assure you that this is the wrong time to come to Scotland? It's very cold. It's very dark. Uh, probably about April or May would be the right time for that. Yeah, yeah, but you're always welcome. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that, that's it. I mean, not not too many questions. I think. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, someone said it looks better than Informacast. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. Um, and oh, another question. I've, I've, sorry, I'm not really reading these very well. Too busy talking. Um, yeah, you can phone view. You can run phone view on a server. It's by design. Works on almost any version of Windows. It actually used to work on Windows XP and probably still does, but that's not officially supported anymore by anybody, so um, we can't do that. But uh, Windows Vista and above, uh, all the way up to Windows 8.1, and uh, Windows Server Platform, Server 2003, um, and above, uh, all the way up to Server 2012. So specifications are very light, um, unless you've got lots of phones, certainly 5,000 or more, starts to put a bit of load on the software, but if you've got under 5,000 phones, it'll work on almost any spec uh, PC or server. <coughs> um, okay, uh, oh yeah, uh, one thing about running it on a server, it uh, might beg the question of multiple users using it at the same time. So one feature which we probably don't tell too many people about, we did a little bit on it when we first released it, is the policy feature. It's only into Enterprise Edition, but it means you can actually control um, all the key features in the software and enable and disable them. So you can turn off the remote audio feature, you can disable backgrounds, you can disable remote control as well and just see the phones, for example. Um, you know, basically each discrete feature you can enable and disable on a per user or per group basis and it uses communications managers, uh, user and group information so you don't have to maintain a separate list of uh, user accounts, etc. So, um, but the reason why some of our customers have uh, maybe started with Engineer Edition and upgraded to Enterprise, um, so they can kind of control that functionality. And uh, it might be worth a, a revisit at some point in the future of that type of feature, because uh, and if anybody wants to know more about it, obviously just reach out to us and we can just do a little WebEx session with you to, to take you through it. Um, okay, I think questions have run dry and probably the same with everybody's attention. Um, so thanks uh, very much for everybody's time. Uh, Good fun as always, hopefully, and um, look out for us uh, in uh, early January and uh, we're pleased to show you the, the Volvo product. Take care.